Julie, it is so good to see you. Good to see you. In person and everything. I know. I know. I it's so weird. You. Yes, I know. You, did. you walked you in. Did. What? What we are you doing here? We should have had the cameras rolling, you know? <laughs> That's right. Should have thought about That's that right. next time. Okay. But it is great to see you. And thank you uh, for finding the time to read and write a review. Finally. Of the new book. <laughs> Hang on. There it is. Heavy lifting. <laughs> grow up. Get a job. Start a family. And other manly advice by uh, Jim Garrity and Cam Edwards. Uh, your review of the book is up at Acculturated. And, uh, and you liked it, I think, is the short version. I gave it a very good review. And not I just because it. we're friends. <laughs> no, no. Maybe a little because we're no, friends. No, it was really, it was just terrific. It was a great read. I, I think I, I put on Twitter that I was laughing within three sentences of the book. Um, I had I'd taken it to my, the coffee shop. Jim has a, the first chapter, by the okay. way. Jim writes the first <laughs> chapter, just so you know. It was, it was so entertaining. I had many moments of laughing out loud. So it's a great book for... Yeah, and and I actually, as you, if you read the review, um, I, you know, I I know that this is is written, you know, I, I think the the main audience is men, but I I would give this to women, particularly women who are in their twenties, maybe just starting out, um, hoping, you know, to to you know, get either in the dating scene, hoping to find a husband. Um, I think it's as useful as a di dating guide as it is um, a guide for young men. So, really, in what yes. way? Um, I start my review by um, using a quote from Sheryl Sandberg for her, from her book, Lean In. And I, I you know, I, I, some of Sheryl Sandberg's book I liked and some I didn't. And, but one thing I did like is she talked about, you know, you can date the bad boys, but don't marry them. Marry the one who's going to, to sort of, as you say, do the heavy lifting um, that's required of marriage and having kids. You want to read the quote? I've got yeah, it here in front of yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. When looking for a life partner, my advice to women is date all of them. The bad boys, the cool boys, the commitment-phobic boys, the crazy boys, but do not marry them. The things that make the bad boys sexy do not make them good husbands. When it comes time to settle down, find someone who wants an equal partner, someone who thinks women should be smart, opinionated, and ambitious, someone who values fairness and expects or even better wants to do his share in the home. These men exist, and trust me, over time, nothing is sexier. Yeah, and and so I, I started my review of this book to say, you know, you you have several chapters. You talk about a whole bunch of things, and you do talk about, you know, marriage and what it takes and the sacrifices. Um, but just in talking about how to be a grown up and how to take on these responsibilities, I think, um, and I said, I said the second the second paragraph was, you know, if, if Cheryl Sandberg was to write a. a um, a sequel, um, it might look a little bit like this. If she were going to guide women on the types of men that you want to marry, um, it's the the type of man that takes this this advice, the advice that you and Jim have laid out. So, um, you know, I again, I, I know that the the audience is is mainly men, but uh, I would I would definitely give this book as a gift to to young women. Wow! Look for this type of guy to wow. marry. I married this type of guy, and I'm very happy. And um, and I think I think. The women that I know that are are uh, are happiest in their marriages are the ones where there's a, a partnership in the marriage. Um, uh, so I think that's the advice you're giving in this book. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I know it helps to be married to somebody awesome. Yes. Uh, yes right. I mean that. Yeah. Yes, that my husband too. would say that. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Your husband would tell you that, uh, yeah. and I tell my wife that all the time. Um, in fact, you were just talking about Christmas cards. Yeah. So I walk out uh, into the living room last night, and she's there, and the elf on the shelf is sitting there beside her. And she's making our Christmas cards, Julie. Because she's of making them, because and I'm like, course, and, and yeah. I look, and I'm like, wait, wait, you made that? Because if I sat down to make Christmas cards, it would just look <laughs> sad. It'd be like, oh, did your son make that? Like, no, right. I, the grown man, made that. This right. looks like it came out of a Hallmark factory. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And so, she, she's so talented. But and again, I think I think I also take. You know the advice that you've. It's not. It's not just for for husbands. It's also for wives. You know, be respectful of your husband and and help him out. And um, anyway, so the I really love the book. But more importantly, I was entertained the entire time I was reading it. And um, and really, just a huge congratulations to well, you. And well, Jim. again, thank you very much for the uh, kind review. And I'm glad that you were entertained. You know, this yeah. is not a scoldy preachy. And I said that. I said that. You did. I said don't expect to get 200 plus. I'm better with you than you, sort of preachy. And we've advice. actually gotten some questions like, "Well, why the hell isn't it more preachy?" And I, 
And the answer would be like, really, would you want to read right. 200 pages of, you're an awful person. Right. You're awful. Well, I, it, you know, it's interesting because as a mom, a lot of mom blogs are the exact opposite of this book. They're very preachy. They tell you you're bad because you don't do something. And that's, you know, I've sort of made a career of being the anti-mom blogger, of mm -hmm. not doing that. Really, you know, telling people to trust their instincts when it comes to parenting and to, to, to do the very best that they can and not to really guilt them about things. And so it's funny. I mean, dad blogs are not really popular. There are some. Um, but if, if this were a dad, if you guys were it started a dad blog, it would be the kind of blog I would I would read because it's not judgy. It's not preachy. Um, it gives some good advice. And, and it but it also doesn't look it doesn't sugarcoat things. You are very clear about what it takes to be a good dad and a good husband and the sacrifices that need to be made. So um, so I, I, I think that's a that's a nuance. It's hard to hard to get. And you did it. So, well, you don't want to mislead people. Right. I mean, you don't want to paint a false picture. You right. know, there, there are arguments with both spouses and children. Right. You know, there are days that are those days. It makes you, ah, boy, you know, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but you know, there are far more moments where you just think to yourself, boy, I'm really lucky. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really glad that uh, I made the decisions that I made. I'm glad that I ended up here. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, frankly, I just, you know, I, I, I worry that we have more people who are not saying that uh, right. and who are deeply unhappy. You know, I was just reading, uh, I think it was in this month's Atlantic, there's a story about the suicides of Silicon Valley. Mm. And the suicide rate in, you know, one of the most affluent zip codes in the country uh, among teenagers mm. is 30, 40 percent higher than the national rate. Um, and here you have people who on the surface, you know, one would think that they would have everything, right? A lot of these people are going straight into Stanford. They're the you know top of their class. Uh, and yet there is apparently a great deal of human misery uh, going on there. And so, you know, I, we didn't, again, we didn't want to write a preachy book. We didn't right. want to say, here's what you shouldn't be. And right. uh, we really wanted to write a, a joyful book about, you know, it's good to grow up. And, yeah. and one of the things when you're a, a, a teenager and things look awful uh, or things look fantastic and you don't want to be an adult, uh, you know, you need to understand that 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 life gets so much better when you're well, actually a an adult. You know, I also talked about how pop how pop culture um, shows parenthood and shows really um, fatherhood uh, in in a lot of television shows. I don't know if you remember this part of the review, but I in, do. In, in television shows today, the father is inevitably he is the biggest fool in the cast. He's Phil he Dunphy. always yes, he always needs rescuing. Mm -hmm. He always needs and and I mean like. Very different from, I mean, like, you think of Archie Bunker, who was kind of the jerk, but there was something lovable about him. You know, it was a it was a much different dynamic with Archie. He was definitely in control, right? Right. And then, but now they're just, they're always just in need of rescue from their wives, their mothers, their mother-in-laws, their daughters, even little kids always save the dad. And then it, it, opposite of, or, or sort of, well, I, I would say related to that, you also have the depiction of the dad. And I mentioned a show on Showtime called The Affair, where he's likable, but he's a horrible person. I mean, he cheats on his wife, he, and, and then he keeps cheating on the next girlfriend. I mean, it's just, it's this horrible depiction of this man who really, you know, is, is completely narcissistic and only follows his own desires, sacrificing his children's happiness and all this. And, um, and so you have those, really those two extremes. There are very few, I think, good depictions of, of fathers. And so this, was, this wasn't only a great depiction of, of what it takes to be a good father and dad, but it was a cheerful sort of invitation to doing it. Um, you know, it's interesting, I mean, as you bring up these, these fatherly images, I mean, like really, if you think, when was the last just cool dad you saw on TV? Bill Cosby. Right, right, mm. uh, right. <laughs> Um, which is why the the you know the uh, the original title of this book was going to be uh, Ward Cleaver is a stud, and then we realized yeah nobody knows who Ward Cleaver is anymore. So <laughs> right. I did. We're going to pass on that, but uh, but it is that idea of you know uh, what, what Jim writes about this in the uh, uh, final chapter of the book as well. The uh, I think it's a Cheerios ad, or maybe this didn't make it into the uh, the book, but he, he talks about the the advertising. Uh, that that you see, and that's sort of like the only place where you'll see involved dads, right? There's the. Uh, do you remember that commercial that came out a couple of years ago, the Swagger Wagon? Yes. Do you remember that, yes, right? It was a mom and yeah. dad, and they got yeah. their swagger. Right. Like, he was proud to be right, a dad. Right. 
it shouldn't that that image should not just exist to sell you stuff. And there is right? and but in marketing there's just as many dumb dads. It's astonishing to me when I watch these commercials. And Honey, it really, how it do kinda, I spread the peanut well, butter? Right. I mean, right. It, really, it really <laughs> I have is. a knife and I have a jar of peanut butter but I What's the big step, honey? I don't know. Right. I know. So spreading it on the counter. No, you Choosy want to put it on the bread. Jeff, yes, yeah. dads can't spread peanut butter, right, right. dummies. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that really it frustrates my husband. You know, when he sees these things, and you know, I, I just feel like in in our culture, men get so little credit for what they do. I mean, even the, even feminists complain. They always talk about how women do the lion's share of housework. Well, I haven't taken the trash out, okay? And seriously, I got married, so I didn't have to take the trash out, so I didn't have to change the oil. I mean, there are certain things that are totally the duty of my husband, right. and I just don't do them. So there's just sort of, I mean, if, if the internet goes down, do you think I tinker with anything? No, I say, can you check something? There's something not happening. I mean, I think that there are things that men do around the house they get very little credit for. And and yes, look, I do I do the lion's share of the, the cleaning and the, and but the this cooking. Is, but this is where the partnership comes right. back. And, yeah. and, and so if you're... And when the thing is, like, I don't know, maybe this comes from reading too many magazines about, you know, 18 ways to, to get your relationship on the right track. But I think you can overthink these things. And you shouldn't be keeping score. Oh, uh, you know, you'll, you'll... No, exactly. Eventually, you'll figure out the routine <clears throat> that, okay, I'm good at this stuff. Yeah. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Right. She's good at this stuff. This is what she's supposed to be doing. Yeah. And then when you get out of balance, one of you lets the other one know. And that honestly is how it how works. It works. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. and you know, I'm not going to say it's like completely argument free. There are those. No. Yeah. Hey, uh, Cam, it's been three weeks since you've made a trip to the dump. And I know that you really don't like doing that, but the garbage is just accumulating. So you need to go. Right, right, right. Today. Um, occasionally that sort of stuff happens. Yeah. But, but, you know, again, if it's, if it's seen as, like this struggle and it's supposed to be this competition and are you getting your fair uh, share of, yeah. of your spouse's time or whatever it i just i think we again we have an industry that is sort of geared towards making it's, us overthink yeah, these things yeah it's the things. same as it's same as uh, the alarmism it's a, it's an anger industry it's like get you know you see all these articles you know uh, the average stay at home mom really should make six figures and you know and and you know the again all this sort of woe is me women do the i, I agree that that you know, women do, do do a lot of, they do, they do a lot of the, the buying of the products that are in the home and the cooking and, and most of the cleaning. And, but again, it's about, uh, I think there are things that men don't get credit for. And secondly, um, if you have a problem with it, talk to your partner. I mean, there is a conversation that can be had and you can ask, you know, you can ask for a, a different, you know, division of labor. Um, and I think that's what Sheryl Sandberg was talking about. You know, Mika Brzezinski, another, you know, sort of famous woman out there, she wrote a book about her own situation, uh, you know, her marriage, her children, her career and balancing all of it. And, you know, she talked about, you know, if you want a really good career, and I, I think this was her quote, I, I hope I'm not misattributing this but um you know she said you know, marry marry a good a good person and, and Cheryl Sandberg has that same message you know if you want to be a successful person it, it also it helps to marry a good person someone who will support you and care about you and so again I just felt like this book was sort of in line with those other books about that women have written but yours again um I think is is a great book for women I really hope women I, I if I were a husband I would put this um in my wife's um under the tree for my wife I think it's a great book for everyone but but I think women would enjoy it too everybody buy heavy lifting that's I think right what julie is saying no matter who you are how old how young how married how single <laughs> buy heavy lifting uh grow up get a job start a family and other manly advice by uh, jim garrity and cam edwards uh you know julie unfortunately that's like that's an entire segment can you believe that just <laughs> well of course talking about the book of I, course i feel like uh we could go on and on we could we could all right listen i will see you again soon i okay. promise and thank you so much for coming in <laughs> Thanks for having have me. Have a very, we'll talk to you next week, actually. So yeah. I won't say have a Merry okay. Christmas. I'll tell you that next week. Right. <laughs> Julie Gunlock, you can find all of her writing uh, at IWF.org. She's also in the New York Post this week talking about GMOs. So make sure you check that out. And thanks again for coming in studio. Thanks for having me.